All right, well, hi, everybody. I'm Heather Johnson, Minnesota Department of Ag. Um, I'm gonna be building off of what Dustin was just talking about and giving the Minnesota perspective to our runoff risk forecast. So my agenda today, I'm gonna to just briefly talk about runoff risk. Most of you were in here, so you heard what Dustin said, but I'll just give you a little of info. I'm gonna do a walkthrough of Minnesota's runoff risk advisory forecast. On the left here, you can see uh, that's a forecast from just last week, April 22nd. We had a lot of uh, rainfall, and so a lot of severe risk of runoff going on there in the south part of the state. And then finally, I'm gonna do some comparison work. I'm gonna show you what are we finding when we take those Discovery Farms edge of field data and compare it to what the model output is saying. So my husband always tells me to start with some jokes. So as forecasting, I thought this was kind of funny. I told you to wear sunscreen, says the one corn to the other. So we always wanna be looking at the forecast and see what weather's coming our way. And then here, because we are talking about manure, says maybe that'll teach you not to buy a manure spreader without seeing it first. So again, just a little humor to get this day started. Um, but again, what is runoff risk? Well, it's a website tool designed to help farmers and commercial applicators determine the best time to apply manure. Um, Precip, snow melt, and other conditions can cause recently applied manure to run off. So this movement can decrease the productivity and then increase that risk of impairing local bodies of water. So the MDA, Minnesota Department of Agriculture, in partnership with the National Weather Service, has developed this RRAF system for Minnesota. And so it is part of a regional risk advisory forecast project. So like Dustin said, there are four states that currently have this operational. I love some of these maps up here because you can see the definitely the different weather that we're seeing. This is some of these are from the snow melt time. So we have some, um, you know, it's very colorful. If you look at the map today, it is blank because we don't have any runoff risk today. Um, but so like Dustin said, their part came from the GRLI funding, whereas from the Minnesota perspective, we were able to build our website tool using the clean water funds. So what is driving this risk of runoff? Well, there's a lot of different factors, but just three main ones. So as we look at that, we have precipitation, and then that timing of precipitation, and finally soil moisture. So again, talking about Minnesota Discovery Farms, we have found when we've looked at that data that on average 41% of that annual surface runoff occurs as snow melt in March and April, which is huge then in your monitoring program that you need to be out there collecting samples during that snow melt conditions. It's not easy. I had coworkers who were out there shoveling trenches to make sure that they could get that water come through the system and that they were accurately capturing everything that was running off. And then on average, 31% of that annual surface runoff occurs in May and June. So when we look at this information, we think, well, how can this tool then help us kind of make sure that when we are getting that runoff, we are not getting those nutrients that are coming off in that runoff. So I'm gonna show you then what our runoff risk forecast looks like. So this is the home page. If you see on the top, now you can see there's our address. I know lots of people have their phones out. So hey, go take a look. So it's at mda.state.mn.us backslash RRAF. Um, it's, if you look at it right now, I was just looking at it, it's pretty boring. So look at the day two forecast you actually will see a little bit of runoff risk happening, but I will be showing you some snapshots so you can see some information. So here there was a question about um, how do you get alerted? So right there, if you were a farmer coming in or somebody like myself coming in, you would come and click right there. You can sign up for either an email message or a text message. Well, you'll get alerted one time a day if your county is in a severe um, chance of runoff. Now, county-based is not ideal. I would have loved to have done um, by your address, but county-based messaging was free. So <laughs> at this time with this tool, we took the free route. Um, so I sign up. So again, if you like to get text messages in the morning, I get about 20 during runoff time because I've signed up for a variety of counties to see how this is working. But honestly, it does work really well. You get this text message or email, you can click on the link, you get brought right to that map. So even though it's county-based, you can look at that map pretty quickly and see, okay, yep, that is my area. What's my plan for the day? And then finally, because it is an ArcGIS um, interface, we can't just link right to it, so you need to use that link right there. And then here you go. Here is the runoff risk page. This is a day one risk, so you can see 
I don't have my, the pointer disappeared, so I'm just gonna point with my hand. Way up on the top on the map, it'll tell you when this risk was created. So this was on April 10th. So um, this was just, let's see, so it's 24, two weeks ago when we were having some really active weather patterns going on. It'll tell you the time, which is really important. Somebody wants to go to this website, they wanna know that they're getting the latest and greatest information. So like Dustin said, we get two runs right now, so at 5.30 or at 7.30 and this will be displayed. Um, you can three, see three different types of days of risk. So you can see a risk on day one, day two, uh, day three, or a multi-day. And we consider multi-day three days during this non-frozen conditions. And then we actually look at a 10-day forecast during frozen conditions. And it is built on an ArcGIS platform. So if you've used ArcGIS, you can click these maps Click them on and off so you can look at the different maps and interact with it. We also have a legend here that describes the different uh, layers of risk, which I'm going to go into next. So here again, here's a snapshot from April 13th. I just zoomed in closer. Here is our legend again. So we've determined there are four levels of risk during these non-frozen conditions and then two levels of risk during frozen ground snow covered conditions. Now this is the same for the whole four states. So if you look at the different websites, you'll see that we all have kind of a little different flavors, but we have tried really hard to stay true on these core things. So if you go to one in Wisconsin, that same type of risk level is the same as you'd see in Minnesota. So if I'm looking at this and thinking, okay, well, what does this mean? Well, the clear means there's no runoff expected. You'd be fine to go out and apply. Low means, okay, so there's a chance, the model's indicating that there's some likelihood that there'll be some runoff, so you should consider this forecast along with other tools. Now, moderate and severe, those are really times when we're saying, hey, there's a really good chance that there's gonna be runoff today. We would, we would ask that you delay that application. I mean, we are never saying don't apply because we realize that producers, they have products that need to get out. And, um, but this is just like we said, another tool where you can say, okay, I'm in severe, but I have another area in a spot that's not experiencing any runoff. I'm gonna go apply over there. But as a scientist, colors, you know, they're fine, but I want data. So we do have some data for you. So here's another snapshot. This was from April 15th. And what you can do with our map, so if you have my map open, you see the whole state, well, you can zoom in. And when you zoom in far enough, this pop-up table becomes active. And that's when you can select any of these grids. So as we talked about, these grids are two kilometers by two kilometers around the state. So you select any grid you want. You can also, on the top right there, you could search. So you could put in your address, you could put in your zip code. You'll be right, brought right there. Um, if you are using this on a daily basis on your computer, you can bookmark it. So you can be right, bookmarked right to that spot. So now you see data, but you can't see it very well. So you have to hit on the arrow, and then the arrow expands. And what we're seeing is this is the five-day forecast for Lyra Township and Blue Earth County. It gives you the lat long. It talks to you about the three-day risk, which is saying it's severe. So in this three-day window, there's a severe risk, severe risk of um, runoff. So you should really consider perhaps applying somewhere else or waiting. You also get the forecast for the precip. You get for air temperature, max and min. We have the two inch soil temperature, the six inch soil temperature, and then snow melt. So we have that for each five days. And then even across the bottom, we have an extended forecast. So you can even see out 10 days. And you know, I wouldn't bet the farm on that 10th day forecast, but it is something interesting to look at. Again, if you're looking out and trying to plan, if you saw that the five day, five, or the six through 10 day were all red, You'd be like, hmm, I maybe need to get out before that because it looks like there's a big pattern coming. And also I wanted to note, so if you had signed up for text messages in Blue Earth County, you would have received one then that morning that said, hey, there's a severe, well, it doesn't say hey. It says there's a severe <laughs> risk of runoff in your area. Please click on this map and it will brought you right to this map so you can see yourself. So going across the tool now, we have precipitation forecasts. So this one was kind of boring, so I brought up the day three forecast. So again, on the bottom, you can see, you can click on and off the days that you want. So here I just selected the day three. It also has the legend. This legend matches up with National Weather Service, so you can 
quickly understand the levels of uh, weather that's coming this way. These maps are also interactive. You can zoom in, go to a grid, you can put in your address, go to that grid, and see that information. <coughs> Oop, right there. And then we also have soil temperature. So we have soil temperature information for the two inch depth, and then also the six inch depth. Now, I'd like to show you the soil temperature data for right now, but we are having some issues. Uh, Dustin knows well aware of it, <laughs> and it's not at our level. The model's working. We're just having a problem with how it's being displayed. So what I'm showing you is information from October, and you can see, I mean, this is just great. It's showing the gradation of color, how it's getting colder up north, and it's still warmer in the south. You also see these dots on here. Well, these dots actually represent um, real-time soil temperature uh, network that we also have. So if you click on any of those dots, you're either brought to a website that shows you the information, or you get this graph, and you can see the actual soil temperature data yourself. Now this is type of information is really important to producers in the fall when they're thinking about when can they go out and apply manure. It's also important in the spring as we're thinking about planting. So I think this aspect of the forecast is also another important part that as we continue to get the word out about it, I want people to really understand that this is a great spot that they can go and look at that soil temperature forecast. Uh, finally, we have a how to use this map, and if you click on the tab, you get brought out of that ArcGIS environment, and we just have some information about how to use it, map information, how to view the map, but we do have a map archive, which this has been really helpful if you're thinking, gosh, how did that work last week? Did it really hit when I had that bunch of runoff? Did the map say it did? So you can choose a date. So here's just a couple. Now this is one from April 3rd. You can see how part of the state's still frozen in that blue. Some is wide open, but then we have some runoff that's occurring in the lower portion. Or you can see in November, it was real cold. So everything was frozen solid and um, just a little bit of activity there. Or there's days like this in July of last year there's absolutely no runoff going on. So, I mean, the, the model is very dependent on what gets fed into it, and it's pretty interesting. But one question I do get is, well, how is this really working? You say that you have this great model and you get all this information. Does it actually, um, does it key up, does it match up with information that is real? Well, I will show you one great example and then one where we miss. So we're gonna look again at these Discovery Farm locations. So here is um, a day one forecast for June 20th, 2018. And then you see the precip forecast. And we're gonna look at the data from right there. So that's a Discovery Farms location that is Blue Earth. It's an old one that's not actually functioning anymore except we do have flow information there. So if you go to the table or the grid, the picture, there's definitely a severe risk of runoff. I mean, there's no question here. Everything around it is red. When you look at the table, you can see that it tells you it's a severe risk. Now the precip value is not that high, so you'd think, well, gosh, they're only getting 0.2 inches. That's not a big deal. But remember, this keys into a lot of different things. It's looking at what has happened. It's looking at soil moisture. It's looking at that soil temperature. So just because the precip low doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to get that severe risk. So here is the actual events, and you can see the response from the rainfall. We had a really good blip in that rainfall, and then the runoff. So this was the second highest one on, for the year, and I would say this was a good solid event. We forecasted severe risk. This would have been a severe runoff. According to them, pretty happy with it. Now, this is one that I'm not happy with, but we have some good explanations. So here's a storm that was going on on July 3rd. So you can see there's there's runoff forecasted for the whole northern part of the state, uh, and we're gonna look at the data from this Redwood Falls location, Discovery Farm, and you see what we call the daily QPF, or the precip. So also, it's all tracking north, everything should be just fine. Well, um, we got about seven inches of rainfall at that Redwood location, which was a historic amount, never had that much rain there. So lots of runoff, um, clearly missed. I mean, re the runoff risk was saying there was no event. So we dug into it further, and basically that precip forecast was wrong. So whatever, the model can also only be as good as the data that comes in. So because of that, uh, it was just something that, as I talked to the forecasters, they indicated that summer convection storms are tough. 
Sometimes these storms can pop up out of nowhere. They can lead to this type of event. So I think if we look ahead to maybe getting data coming in four times a day, that might help. But again, it's a tool. So you shouldn't stake everything on it, but it's a good thing to look at and be aware of. So finally, I wanna just do a little bit more comparison work. So I looked at six edge of field sites where we monitor over overland flow. So within those six sites, we had what we, um, there was 103 actual events that occurred. So in terms of what was predicted, 87 of those events or 84% were, 84 were predicted to have some level of event. So within those events, did those predictions match? That's a good question. Well, <laughs> for the 39 actual low events, we predicted 10 of those, so that was 26%. For 40 moderate events, we predicted six of those, so that was 15%. And finally, for the 24 severe events, we got 15 of those, or 63%. I'm pretty happy with that number. But again, I want you to keep in mind, this is six edge of field sites, and we're looking at a whole state worth of information and as I show you this next one, um, we've also learned that, so I found that we had 106 events that were predicted where there was no event. So again, when we look at that, low was 23, there was 35, and then there was 39 severe events. So we don't want that. We don't want to be over predicting because then if people get too many over predictions, they're not gonna come back to the website. But it's a lot of it is also with education. As we look at this, you can see if you lived right in the middle, you could have had a low right next to yourself or a moderate. Um, I think as I dig deeper into this data, I'm gonna look for more of these and say, well, how did it do when the whole area was in severe? Like I showed you with that first one, that was a good hit. Um, it, it, it's concerning, but it's, it's a tool. And we continue to refine it. We continue to work on the algorithms. We continue to learn more about it. I'm pretty happy because I think any time that we can be letting somebody know that there's this potential risk, um, it's, it's a win, especially then if they use it with other information they had. So again, runoff risk, it's just a tool, another tool in the toolbox. And the usefulness of this, again, is a tool. By having landowners better informed in their decision-making process, not only do we benefit, but, they bene but everybody benefits by having less nutrients enter our waterways. So in closing here, I just wanna say this is a new tool. We've had it going for about a year that can be helped to make these daily applications. We do continue to review the edge of field data and look for feedback with National Weather Service. We're talking with them, showing what we're getting, seeing how we can work with it further. And if you're interested, sign up, take a look. Let me know what you think. See if you think it's working or um, how it performs in your county if you live in Minnesota. And I just wanna acknowledge our people who helped with the data, Dustin and folks at MDA. And with that, I'll say thank you and ask if there's any questions. So does the model take into account any like distance to a drainage body or stream or river or is it the overall the risk of nutrient movement or? Um, I guess I would go and Dustin say no. No, it's not. We're not looking at any water quality aspect of that yet either. It's just the runoff. You know, we're only forecasting the runoff of the risk of that. So no. Yes. Do you ever? The edge of the field ones really depend on what's happening in that field, mm -hmm. what's happening with the management and the soils in that field. Do you ever try to, oh, this edge of field will always give us less runoff or more? Or yep, that, that's kind of what I'm digging into now. I mean, it was fascinating because there was one site last year that we even, they had historic amounts of rainfall, they had zero runoff. And then I think we had forecasted like 25 events. But so again, that doesn't mean that the field right next to it could have had runoff. So I want to dig more into that, kind of understand those six locations, kind of give a little bit more information as we look to see specifically, okay, maybe this location, we're just always missing the severe events or, you know, like this one's never running off. So good question. Thank you. Dan. All right, thank you. One more time.